Welcome back to lecture number 15. Again, I'm Professor Anant Agarwal and my colleague is here, Dr. Arash Salami. We are with the Department of Electrical Engineering at the Ohio State University. And this uh, series is funded by Office of Naval Research. So, <clears throat> Uh, last time we talked about the reverse leakage current of Schottky diodes and how that current is increased by uh, barrier lowering, tunneling, impact ionization. And before that we had talked about the forward bias uh, of the Schottky diodes. So, today we are going to talk about high voltage Schottky diodes and how they are made and in practice. But to continue this discussion, <clears throat> basically we take a, so basically we take a short key diode, which is an ideal short key diode right here. This is a short key metal, this is a semiconductor. Now, in order to make it a high voltage diode, what we do is we increase the thickness of this semiconductor layer and we precisely control the doping and thickness of this layer. This layer is called the drift layer. So, when we apply high reverse bias, that voltage is dropped across the drift layer. So, the purpose of the drift layer is to increase the breakdown voltage of the ideal Schottky diode. And of course, we have the n-type substrate and cathode on the back. Now, these high voltage diodes, uh, regardless of the voltage, uh, in this slide we consider 600 volt Schottky barrier diodes. And later on, I will show you some calculations for 600 volt Schottky barrier diodes. But in general, the high voltage diodes uh, are designed in two ways. The first method is non punch through and the second method is punch through. What is the difference? In non punch through, the thickness of the drift layer is bigger or larger such that when we apply reverse bias, the electric field at the interface of the short key and semiconductor reaches a critical value of breakdown EC, but at that point the depletion extends all the way up to the drift layer, but does not enter the substrate. That means the depletion does not extend into the substrate and this is called the non punch to structure. In contrast, this second structure is a punch through structure where the drift layer thickness is shorter and there is a buffer here which is highly doped buffer layer. So, what happens that at some voltage where the critical field, where the field at the interface is less than the critical field, say some something like this, the entire drift layer is uh, depleted and the depletion then extends into the buffer layer, but not into the substrate. And in this case, we can keep increasing the break, uh, applied voltage till the field here reaches the critical field and at that point, the entire drift layer is depleted and a portion of the buffer layer is depleted. But we design the buffer layer thickness and doping such that the depletion does not extend into the substrate. 
So, this is called the punch through case because the entire drift layer is depleted. So, these are the two methods uh, of designing diodes. In most cases, the short key diodes are designed for punch through because as you will see, the doping for the <coughs> As you will see that the, although the doping for non punch through is higher than the doping for punch through, but the thickness is also higher for non punch through compared to punch through. So, overall the resistance of the drift layer in the punch through case is less than the non punch through case. So, if we can minimize the resistance of the drift layer in the punch through case, then it is a better design, which is what we do normally. So, <clears throat> let us consider the case of non punch through design, the first case on the left there. So, here is my metal semiconductor ideal junction, and then we have a drift layer, and it is thickness is W D shown right here and then here is the substrate. Now, when we apply reverse bias, the depletion extends through the N minus layer and the electric field here starts building up and you can see when the electric field has a triangular shape. Uh, and when this field at the interface reaches the critical field, then the depletion layer extends up to the thickness W D, but not beyond that, so that it does not extend into the substrate. So, in this case, you can show from Gauss's law that this field at the interface is the total charge Q times N D times W D. This is the total charge in this depletion layer in the drift layer, which is shown right here Q times N D times W D divided by the permittivity of the semiconductor gives you the critical field. And when this critical field uh, uh, is reached at the interface, then the device breaks down. Now, area under the electric field curve, which is this triangle in blue, we can neglect the area in green here, this is very small. The area under the triangle uh, in blue is the voltage dropped across the short key diode, which will be the built in voltage plus the breakdown voltage that we are designing the device for V B R. And you can see the area of the triangle is E C times W D divided by 2 <coughs> and substituting the value of E C from this equation, you can derive this relationship for the breakdown voltage and we can always neglect V B I, it is less than 1 volt. So, for a 600 volt design, we can definitely neglect this quantity. So, this gives you the design equations. If I give you the breakdown voltage and the critical field, you can calculate the thickness W D that is needed and you can also calculate the doping for that drift layer. So, we <coughs> with these equations, you can calculate the drift layer thickness and doping for the non punch through design. And this is a unique solution uh, because we can uniquely determine the thickness and the drift layer doping. 
then the next case is punch through design. As we said, we designed the drift layer a little shorter and what happens that as we apply the reverse voltage, uh, the semiconductor depletes all the way up to the substrate and then, and this is the buffer layer actually, all the way up to the buffer layer and then it depletes the buffer layer slightly such that the total voltage dropped is the breakdown voltage and the field, electric field at the interface of the metal and semiconductor is the critical field for breakdown. All right, so let us see what is happening here. As we are increasing the reverse bias, the electric field at this interface increases up to point E1 and at E1, the entire drift layer is depleted and this is the punch through design. And since E1 is less than EC, we can continue to apply more and more reverse bias. And at that point, uh, the, char the electric field starts uh, penetrating the buffer layer and we get this classical trapezoid uh, distribution of the electric field. Again, we can show that this value of electric field when the entire depletion region is punched through or depleted is given by Gauss's law, total charge divided by epsilon s. And the breakdown voltage is AD under the trapezoid, neglecting this green and uh, blue components. Then <clears throat> the total breakdown voltage would be the area of the trapezoid, which we can calculate from this equation. So if you see, <clears throat> uh, that the area of this triangle uh, right here is from the previous page is uh, this term here. And when we multiply EC times WD, we get the area of this rectangle. And then we subtract we have to subtract the area of this triangle here, which is the same as area of this triangle. So, the area in blue, which is the area of the trapezoid is given by this equation, which is basically the area of the rectangle minus the area of the triangle. So, you can think about it, you can derive this. Uh, uh, basically, we should draw a dotted line from E C parallel to the x axis and that would form a triangle here and that triangle is the same as this triangle and this triangle's area is this. So, we basically take the rectangular area subtract the area of the triangle. Now, what we will see is that there is no unique solution for doping of the drift layer and the thickness of the drift layer for a given breakdown voltage. Um, infinite number of combinations are possible, which is shown here. You can see we have drawn the trapezoid for one doping and one thickness. And supposing we increase the doping and increase the thickness and now we have the green line and we can show that this area would be the same as the blue area. And then we increase the doping further and thickness further and you can show that the area under the red trape trapezoid is the same as area under the green trapezoid which is the same as area under the blue trapezoid. So, you can see infinite number of combinations are possible. 
which give you the same breakdown voltage for punch through design. Uh, so, we can now develop some equations for the non punch through design and the punch through design. So, the non punch through is straightforward, we discussed uh, these equations uh, earlier in this presentation. And then we can also calculate the on resistance of the non punch through. The on resistance is the on resistance is the resistance here, this resistance, which is the resistance of this drift layer, which depends on the doping of the drift layer, the thickness of the drift layer and the cross sectional area of the semiconductor. Assuming cross sectional area is 1 centimeter square, we can calculate the resistance of this drift layer and this resistance when the cross sectional area is assumed to be 1 centimeter square is called specific on resistance for that semiconductor. So, continuing this, uh, we can now calculate the resistance of the non punch through layer by simply the thickness of the drift layer divided by the Q mu n n d and then we get a unique solution which is given by these equations. So, we can solve for the drift layer thickness, we can solve for the doping and we can solve for the specific on resistance. In terms of the breakdown voltage for non punch through design and the critical field for a given semiconductor and of course, the mobility for electrons. So, this is simple, uh, non punch through is very simple. The punch through is little more difficult because as I said, there are infinite number of solutions possible. So, what are we going to do? As we showed you, the breakdown voltage is given by this equation, which is the area under the trapezoid whether you take the blue trapezoid or the green trapezoid or the red trapezoid, trapezoid uh, this area is the same. We know the critical field, we, <coughs> we know the breakdown voltage, but we do not know the thickness of the drift layer for punch through case and we do not know the doping. So, these are the two quantities we want to determine. WPT and NDPT. We can also write the equation for the on specific on resistance of the drift layer again as we did in the last case thickness of the drift layer divided by the <coughs> conductivity which is Q times mu n times the doping and again cross sectional area is supposed to be 1 centimeter square. So, the units of the specific on resistance are ohm centimeter square or milli ohm centimeter square. So, now in order to get an optimum solution, we can take the ratio of the on resistance to the breakdown voltage and we can do the math to minimize that ratio, which means we want to minimize the on resistance and in for a given breakdown voltage. So, once we do the optimization, we can derive these simple equations and I will encourage you to take this ratio from these two equations and find the optimum solution and I have given the optimum solution here. So, again you can calculate the thickness of the drift layer, the doping of the drift layer and the specific on resistance of the drift layer in terms of given breakdown voltage, given critical field and the mobility of the semiconductor 
and if you do these calculations for a given breakdown voltage, you will find that the punch through resistance is 86 percent of the non punch through resistance. That means, punch through design is better because it has a smaller resistance, but the same breakdown voltage. So, that is why the punch through design is preferred. So, I have taken this graph from Professor Baliga's uh, book, which is referenced here. This is the punch through design for silicon and what we are plotting is the breakdown voltage versus the doping concentration for different values of the drift layer thickness. So, this is 5 micron, 10 micron, 20 micron, 50 micron and 100 micron. So, it turns out that this straight line shows the non punch through case. As we said, the non punch through case has a unique solution, whereas these lines represent the punch through case where the same breakdown voltage can be obtained for different doping, different thickness of the drift layer. There are many, many combinations possible. Now, in drawing these graphs, what Professor Baliga has done is also taken the crit variation of the critical field with doping into account. So, as doping increases, the critical field E c also increases slightly. So, once you take that variation into account, you can get a curve like this. So, what this is saying, for example, if we want to design a 1000 volt silicon short key barrier diode, then we go along this line and let us do a non punch through design. We will see that a non punch through design means our doping is going to be about 3 times 10 to the 14 per centimeter cube. So, remember those numbers <clears throat> about 50 micron thickness for 1000 volts for silicon and about 3 times 10 to the 14 doping. Now, the same calculations are shown for silicon carbide by Professor Baliga and here if you go to 1000 volts and you read the numbers here, you can see that the doping is now much higher is 2 times 10 to the 16. So, almost 10 times higher doping than the silicon case and thickness is only 5 micron. So, again that was 50 micron, this is only 5 micron. So, 50 micron for silicon, 5 micron for silicon carbide. So, two orders of magnitude higher doping and one order of magnitude smaller thickness means we have the resistance of the silicon carbide device which is 1000 times smaller than the silicon case for 1000 volts, right. So, again <clears throat> 50 micron thickness 2 times 10 to the 14 doping for silicon, 5 microns of silicon carbide 2 times 10 to the 16 doping. So, 1000 times difference between the doping times the drift layer thickness product between the two cases and that means silicon carbide resistance for the silicon carbide short key diode for 1000 volts would be 1000 times smaller than the silicon. So, this is why we want to work on wide band gap semiconductors such as silicon carbide and gallium nitride because we can design these short key diodes which are 
much, much smaller in area and much more efficient due to smaller resistance. So, in this case we have taken that 600 volt diode, we have used the equations we developed and we have plotted the specific on resistance of different uh, <coughs> voltages for the diodes for gallium nitride, silicon carbide and silicon. So, just looking at say for example, 5000 volt silicon carbide diode will have a specific on resistance of 10 milli ohm centimeter square and same thing in silicon would be 1000 times higher on resistance. And if we go to the 1000 volt similar comparison holds true. So, what this means is that for a given on resistance and a given breakdown voltage, the 4 H silicon carbide diode would be 1000 times smaller than the silicon diode. In reality, it is not such a big difference, but something like 100 to 200 uh, times smaller diode still makes a very good practical sense. And obviously, GAN has a slightly higher breakdown field, so the GAN diodes would be even better. However, to date, GAN vertical diodes, short key diodes have not been successfully fabricated. So, we basically express that design here for silicon carbide GAN and silicon for 600 volt for the two cases non punch through and the punch through cases assumptions for mobility breakdown field and dielectric constant are shown here and the constants are shown here and you can compare the numbers and you can convince yourself that. Uh, first of all, the resistance of the of the punch through case is smaller than the resistance of the non punch through case. So, that is why we prefer the punch through case. The second thing you can see again same uh, idea we had expressed silicon has much higher specific on resistance at 600 volt compared to the silicon carbide and the difference is close to 1000. There is, uh, there is not exactly 1000 because the mobility in silicon carbide is lower than silicon and the electric field is not exactly 10 times different but it is it's a pretty close number about factor of 800 different. A factor of I think we get factor of 200 here between silicon carbide and silicon and factor of 2 difference in gallium nitride and silicon carbide. So, now how do we make these diodes? Um, in practice, we do not make pure Schottky diodes. What we have been discussing so far are the pure Schottky diodes where the metal is in contact with semiconductor and we get a Schottky diode. So, we make two types of diodes, one is called the junction barrier control Schottky in short JBS and the other is merged PIN Schottky or in short MPS diode. So, here is the difference between the two, they have exactly the same structure. So, we take an n-type drift layer, the red, line, the red 
uh, layer here is the short key metal layer. But what we do is we put this grid of P plus I lens in between. So what we are actually making is short key barrier diode which is pure next to a pin diode and then again short key barrier diode and then again pin diode. So, <clears throat> the difference between the MPS and JBS is this ohmic contact to the P plus. If we do not have a good ohmic contact then it is called JBS diode because then we cannot forward bias this uh, anode. But if we have a good ohmic contact then it is called the MPS diode because then we can inject holes in this PN junction. So, how does it work uh, or why is MPS preferred over JBS? So, remember as we said <clears throat> if we look at the JBS diode, Uh, the IV characteristics will have an E voltage and then we have the on resistance of the JBS diode which we just calculated as specific on resistance. Pin diode will have a high, larger knee, but will have a smaller resistance because it is conductivity modulated drift layer. We have both electrons and holes in the semiconductor which lower the resistance of the drift layer. Now, if we make a JBS diode, it will continue on the red line. If we make a MPS diode, this is the point where the P n junctions or the P plus n grid or the built in P i n diode will start injecting. So, the green line here would be the MPS diode red line here would be the JBS diode. So, the MPS diode would come would look like a JBS diode except when it crosses this point and then it will follow the PIN diode characteristics. So, basically MPS diode can provide much higher forward surge current when needed because the PN diodes start injecting current. So, again MP, JBS diode is the red line, MPS diode will follow the JBS diode and when it reaches this point it will follow the green line. So, it gives you much higher surge capability. So, uh, this is a slightly busy view graph but you can neglect all this writing here. We can focus on how these JBS and MPS diodes work in forward and reverse. So, the first figure is in the forward case. The current flows from the short key diode, it spreads through the drift layer and gets collected in the back. So, this current is only flowing in these areas where we have a pure short key diode. When we go to very high voltages and if it is an MPS diode meaning a good ohmic contact then this P plus N junction will inject current and will give us the surge capability. But for normal operation only the short key part is contributing to the forward conduction as we showed here with the red line. So, this is how the JBS and MPS diodes look like in normal operating conditions. Under the reverse bias, the P plus N junction will deplete. So, the semiconductor between the two adjacent P plus areas would be fully depleted and the depletion will extend downwards as we have increased the reverse bias. So, that has an important effect when this is fully depleted 
then the electric field at this point where my laser pointer is, is reduced. And with this reduced electric field, you can remember from the reverse bias discussion that the barrier lowering reverse leakage current depends on the electric field. So, we reduce the electric field in the short key area by designing two P plus junctions close enough so that they can deplete the area in between. Then we can reduce the reverse leakage current. So, this type of construction reduces the electric field between the grids, between the P plus grids and therefore, reduces the reverse leakage current or reduces the short key barrier lowering effect. <coughs> so, that is the advantage of making a JBS or MPS diode and most of the silicon and silicon carbide diodes are of this category. Now, <coughs> uh, paper from one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Brett Hall, it shows a nice picture of the JBS diode he made with a very thick drift layer, 120 micron drift layer and a doping of 6 times 10 to the 14 on 4 H silicon carbide and this was uh, published I believe in 2000. 2008 I think, uh, 2009, presented in 2008 and published in 2009. You can see that first of all this diode can block all the way up to 12 kV and the red dotted line is the pin diode pure PIN diode, not the JBS or not the MPS, pure PIN diode. You can see that the leakage current all the way up to 12 kV is very small. The JBS diodes at different temperatures have a higher leakage current than the pin diode and that is because of the three mechanisms we had discussed, uh, barrier lowering tunneling and impact ionization, whereas spin diode only has the impact ionization. So, because of barrier lowering and tunneling, short key diodes have higher leakage currents. Normally, this would be too high, but the fact that we have the JBS grid lowers the electric field as we discussed and therefore, it lowers the reverse leakage current. In the forward case, you can see two things as happening. If we increase the temperature from 25 to 200 degrees C, we can first of all see that the knee voltage reduces with temperature because thermionic emission over the barrier would be much easier at high temperatures. But very soon the drift layer resistance takes over and we know the drift layer resistance will increase with temperature. So, in effect at higher temperatures the short key diode resistance for operating conditions will increase with temperature. And in PIN, PIN diodes it is quite the reverse. The first curve is 2500 degree C and as we heat it, the curve moves to the left. So, two things are happening, knee voltage is reducing and your lifetime is improving. So, you are storing more minority charge in the drift layer and you are getting more conductivity modulation and that reduces the on resistance of the PIN diode and 
the built-in voltage is reducing with temperature. So, the whole curve moves to the left. So, in that sense, the two diodes are different. Uh, pin diodes have a lower leakage current, but a higher knee voltage, therefore higher conduction losses. Short key diodes have a little higher con leakage, which can be designed, which can be reduced by designing the grid spacing properly, but has a positive temperature coefficient and resistance. So, the resistance goes up with temperature. So, when we put it all together and this is the structure of the JBS short key diodes, we will discuss this in detail, but you can for example, see that the P plus JBS grid is shown by these stripes. Uh, so, this is the PIN diode and this is the pure short key diode, then this is the PIN diode and then this is the uh, pure short key diode. So, we have P plus grid with a certain spacing which is optimized to reduce the electric field. We have guard rings for edge termination, we have rounded edges. And then we have a short key metal and a top over layer metal to uh, carry the current. And then finally, we have a channel stop. The purpose of that we will discuss later. Basically, the purpose is to stop the lateral extension of the electric field from the main diode sideways at this point by putting a highly doped N plus channel stop implanted region, so that the electric fields do not go beyond that diode. Uh, so, we will discuss these details in, uh, uh, in the next few lectures, but today we will stop here and we will pick it up next time. Thank you.